Hey, it's Mirna from Happiness Academy. Welcome to the Happiness Academy podcast, a place where you can discover practical, simple, yet effective tools from the science of positive psychology. You're at the right place if you're looking to live a life of well-being and joy, staying resilient when facing any challenges, and incorporating a sense of meaning in things you do. Ready? Let's dive in. I hope you're ready to explore the topic of savoring. Now, what is savoring? Savoring is a way of getting more enjoyment and pleasure um, out of things that we are experiencing through being more mindful, focused and appreciative and present in that experience. So it's very tightly related to the idea of mindfulness but it also connects a little bit more towards pleasure and enjoying that thing that we are experiencing in a mindful way. While in mindfulness, we keep a more of that balanced mind, not so much getting engaged in the experience, but being more balanced, non-judgmental, or observant, aware. In savoring, on the other hand, we just want to, you know, get the juice out of it, get the full um, joy of that experience. And there are many things we can savor. So today I'll just briefly share with you some ideas of what are the things we can savor so we would build more of enjoyment and positive emotions in our life. And then I'll also share three specific practical tips or you could say tools um, for savoring more um, and, and leveraging that more in practice. First of all, I'm sure when I share what savoring is, one of the first things that came to your mind is food. Uh, It's one of the most um, delicious things that we can savor and one also that we can engage with in so many ways. And savoring is probably one of the most constructive ways where we get um, a lot of joy out of food, but we also keep moderate because we get a lot of experience from not necessarily huge quantities. So food is definitely one way that we can savor a lot and from which we can um, get a lot of um, a lot of those sensations and really experience it in an enjoyable way. But so is anything else where we engage with our senses. You can think about shower, movement, um, so feeling of our body as it moves, sense of touch, being it with our own skin or with another person or animal or anything else, that sense of touch, the experience of touch, touching a tree, touching a stone. Uh, There are many things that we can experience through sense of touch. And if we savor them, we can actually get a lot of sense of connection and sense of enjoyment out of that. And it can also be a sense of a smell that we can savor. So kind of really enjoying the subtle nuances of a smell or our hearing when we, for example, listen to a complex piece of music and we truly savor the different aspects of it. And it can also be a wonderful view. So savoring something visually, noticing the details, experiencing those details fully from piece of art to a beautiful landscape. So the first group of things that we can experience through savoring is things related to our senses, from food to views to smell, touch or anything else, things through which we can relate through all of our senses in which we engage with the world. Now, the second group is one which is more related to our mind, and that's experiencing and savoring things from our mind, like mental images, and things from our past, like our memories. Example of this could be reflecting, or sometimes also discussing and sharing and reflecting together with someone else on dear moments from our past, like thinking about the travel we did together, about the moment that happened to us, about some experience we had, and really remembering the details of that experience, remembering the emotions that we had within that context, um, and just sharing that reflection, savoring that memory is something that can also give us huge amount of positive emotions and a lot of enjoyment and also connection with other person. And then the third group is a bit more future oriented and that one is about plans and dreams. We could savor, you know, things we're excited about. We could build different daydreams or specific plans and specific actions that we want to take. And through that, we can build a lot of positive emotions, but we can also build a lot of motivation, excitement, even courage if we are looking forward to something, but we're also a bit afraid of it or maybe worried about it. So we can also build a sense of courage, um, a sense of um, 
hopefulness towards the future of how things more, might work out, so sense of hope and optimism. So in many ways, we built positive mindset and positive emotions through savoring our hopes and visions um, and plans uh, and dreams of the future. So I'll leave it here with these three rough categories. So, uh, savoring things through our senses, savoring things from our past, savoring things that we're building for the future. And now allow me to share also three practical tools or tips if you want to savor more and get more out of different experiences in your life, how could you um, do that in a practical way? Before that, allow me to also remind you that this year, if it's still 2023 when you're listening to this, that this year in September, um, we are uh, doing a learning getaway also on the topic of mindfulness and savoring. Learning Getaway is a week-long, live, immersive event um, that we do at Happiness Academy every year, which serves as a week of a deep learning, but also rich new experiences, amazing conversations, all of it in a setup of beautiful locations. So the one in September 2023 will be in Istria, one of the most beautiful regions in Croatia, and also one of the most hedonistic one. And on this getaway, we will be exploring um, topics of mindfulness and savoring as tools to enjoy life more fully. So if savoring, mindfulness, enjoying life uh, is on your agenda for your future, definitely might be an event for you to join. Uh, check out the link in the description to discover details. Now, how can we do more of savoring in a practical, action-oriented way? Tip number one, by slowing down. Yeah, this one is tough for me very much. <laughs> no. However, it is also the key. If we want to engage with things more deeper, if we want to harvest different sensations and emotions more deeper and, and get more of experience out of things we interact with, we must slow down a little bit. We must be more mindful, slow, allowing space, allowing emotions to arise, allowing senses to be processed fully. So the first rule of savoring better is engaging with things a little bit more slow and that doesn't mean that all of our experiences must be very slow it just must me means that we must create those short moments of being a bit more slow and experiencing more deeply which we then sprinkle throughout the experience with which we want to engage more an example could be if we want to engage uh, in savoring our food, our lunch more, it doesn't mean we have to eat like a sloth for three hours, one bite at a time and sniff and observe every bite. But we might want to do that just for the first bite and then do, be, just be really slow and mindful in the way we observe, maybe cut off or pick up our first bite of food, the way we notice maybe its colors and textures, maybe we smell it a bit, and maybe we taste it more slowly than we normally would. But then after that, we can engage with the rest of our lunch in a fairly regular way, because our senses are now already a bit more awake. We gave them a chance to tune into this experience. So the first tip, slowing down. The second tip, is to just keep on including senses more in our life in everyday basis. Sounds a bit crazy, but we're not really doing a lot of that sometimes. You know, it's quite easy for us to cut off from our body and from our senses. Like if we are in pain, we'll try to escape from that. If anything hurts us physically, if we have a lot of work and we are stressed, we will kind of cut off from the body. We will hunch and do things fast, maybe drive or type or whatever. And we will kind of neglect how our body actually feel and how our senses actually feel. So tuning in with our body and our senses a little bit more, taking that nice deep breath a bit more often and just noticing how, what do I see? What do I smell? What do I hear? How does my body feel? What can I experience through, through my you know, sense of touch uh, in this moment? Just tuning back to that just for short moments more often throughout our day, it will make us more alive, more open to savoring, more mindful in the experiences in our life. So start doing that right now. Think, do pause the video or the podcast for a second and just notice. What can you smell? What can you see? What can you hear? How does your body feel? Do a bit of that checkup. And then when you're ready, 
let's share the tool number three or the tip number three. And the tip number three is to tune up your sense of appreciation. If you think about what savoring truly is, it is about experiencing things more and deeper, but it is especially also about appreciating them more. And it's not about conscious game of saying, oh, I appreciate this so much. It's not verbal. It's just noticing what we like about this experience, noticing why this experience is worthy and valuable and beautiful. So kind of just coming back to appreciating uh, and building that sense of gratitude. I'll give you an example. If you want to savor and appreciate a glass of water more, go for a run without water. When you come back, on a hot day especially, when you come back and you take that cold glass of water, you will definitely savor it and appreciate it much more than normal glass of water. So can we be more aware of that, that we appreciate things not only when we crave them and miss them, um, and then get them, but actually every glass of water I take can I experience in the similar way like I would after a long run on a hot day. So that appreciation, we can again relate to our senses um, and, and sensory experiences, but we can also relate it to people around us, um, to, to our thoughts, um, to things we achieve in terms of work or anything else, and just tune that sense of appreciation a bit more up and it will lead us to be more mindful, to savor more, to feel more positive emotions about things we're experiencing. I hope you got some ideas on savoring from this topic today. I hope you will go out and try it out in practice right now, today. And um, you don't even need a lot of, you know, wisdom and tools and knowledge about this topic. You just need to think about it a little bit more and, and use that ability of our human mind and human body a little bit more to savor things. However, if you do want to keep a bit of focus, I will do a quick summary of the six things I mentioned today, three areas for savoring and three tools, and you can pick which of them is the most important one for you. First one in the areas of savoring was area of food and senses and sensory experiences. So using our body and senses to savor the world around us more. Second one was savoring our memories and reflecting on past experiences that were beautiful, inspiring and positive. And third one was dreaming of the future, savoring our future plans, savoring our excitement for what is to come, building beautiful images in our head and plans about um, what is ahead of us. Those are the three areas. And then the three tools were slowing down, Second, including our senses more, being more aware of our body and our senses at all times. And then also appreciating more, appreciating things we experience, appreciating things in our life in general. As you know, that's not just for savoring, but also for our well-being, building more of appreciation. I hope you found some wisdom and ideas in this podcast, and I would love to hear from you what resonated with you most, or maybe also which other topic you might want to dig in deeper. So don't be shy. <coughs> Sorry for that. Add on your comments to this podcast or video. Um, write us through Instagram at Happiness Academy um, and share any feedback and ideas. We would love to hear from you. We would love also to hear you like and share this podcast if you like these ideas and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you for exploring this topic with me. I hope you found some exciting ideas and tools that you will use already today. Remember, they only work if you put them in practice, but then they make all the difference. If you like Happiness Academy podcast, do leave us a rating and a review. It will be really helpful. And if you haven't done it yet, click on the links in the episode description to discover free materials and valuable resources to dive in deeper. See you in the next episode or at the Happiness Academy newsletter.